Seam carving is a handy algorithm used to resize images in a content-aware manner. This process allows an image to be shrunken and enlarged in a non-uniform manner, while also preserving the integrity of the most important content of the image. There are many instances where an algorithm like this becomes incredibly useful. For one, images on modern websites must be able to fit on a variety of different windows and monitor sizes. Traditionally, solutions like cropping and scaling are limited in their abilities to preserve an image's content. Seam carving negates this issue by providing a flexible solution that retains the most important aspects of an image. Essentially, seam carving finds the least important seam from a picture and removes it. It finds a seam of least importance by assigning an energy value to each pixel in an image. To preserve the picture's integrity, it removes these pixels by finding connected paths or seams from one side of a picture to the other. Each seam removed is a line of pixels that contain the lowest energy value in total for that image. This approach provides a clear way to shape images to a desired size, but has its disadvantages. When faces appear in a picture, the relations between features are important. Seam carving can therefore cause facial distortion. To combat this problem, one can use facial detection in conjunction with seam carving to automatically assign pixels in facial areas with high energies, thus protecting those pixels from removal. Moreover, seam carving also performs badly on images where the variance of pixels is high uniformly. The algorithm will then find it hard to pick which pixels are most important. Okay, so how does the seam carving algorithm work? Well, our goal is to retain interesting content of an image while resizing it. But how do you define interesting content? Well, uh, in our algorithm, we define it as content with the most color shift relative to its neighboring pixels. The color shift is calculated and stored in a 2D array where the indices are pixels corresponding to X and Y. So rows are X's, Y's are columns, and then pixels with high energy are considered more interesting content and are favored to be preserved, um, while lower energy pixels are considered uninteresting and can be removed without losing any core content of a min image, typically. Um, it is also important to note that border pixels maintain a maximum energy value in order to prevent seam hopping from one side of the image to the other. Um, so the way we determine the energy of an actual pixel is using the dual gradient energy function, which we can see in the following image. We get the delta in uh, the x's left and right neighboring pixels. Um, and we get the difference of the RGB values, add it all up, and then we get the delta in the y's up and down RGB values. Then we get the magnitude of those two values to essentially get an average of all the color change um, in the cardinal directions of that pixel. And we get the magnitude by squaring both values and then getting the square root of them, uh, essentially Pythagorean's theorem. Now that we have defined how to determine interesting content in a given image, we can begin using the seam carving algorithm. Um, when initializing the seam carver class, we scan through each pixel and determine the energy of said pixel and store it in a 2D array where the array's indices are the pixels x and y coordinates in the image. Once we have the energy of every single pixel, we can identify a horizontal or vertical seam for removing by um, finding the seam with the least total energy once we go through the image. By having a seam with the least total energy marked for removal, we maintain uh, content awareness when resizing the image. And uh, hopefully we will have cropped the image without removing any important features. A seam is a connected path of pixels from one end of an image to the opposite end. 
We identify a seam for removal by finding a path of pixels with the least total energy. When looking for a path with the least total amount of energy, we are essentially solving a shortest path directed graphs problem with these differences. The weights are on the vertices instead of the edges, and we want to find the shortest path from any given top row of border pixels for a vertical seam, or find the shortest path from any given left border pixel for a horizontal seam. We use Dijkstra's shortest path algorithm to identify the seam or path with the least total amount of energy in a given image when moving horizontally or vertically. For example, when finding a vertical seam, we determine the distance to each column from any of the top row of pixels. We scan from left to right and find the path of least total energy to a given pixel in the row. We store the shortest path to a pixel in a visited 2D array and indicate what column provides the shortest path to said pixel. We continue this pattern of scanning left and right down the image until we have an array of the smallest distance to reach the bottom of any column in the image. We also maintain what column provided the shortest path to a given pixel in the 2D visited array. By doing this, we can put in a pixel's coordinates as the indices for the visited array and get what column provided the shortest path to the reference pixel. Once we have traversed the whole image, we simply find the column that resulted in the least total amount of energy and trace back the path of least total energy to get to each pixel in our found seam. A couple of things to note here. In our visitor array, we identify a origin point as negative 1. In this case, any pixel in the top row for a vertical seam will be marked as negative 1. When we encounter two paths of equal energies and we are in a corner, which limits the amount of possible seams, we choose to grab the pixel edge closer to the center of the image. For example, although pathing the pixel 0, 1 for either possible edge 0, 0 or 1, 0 will add the same energy, we choose to grab the pixel edge closer to the center. In the case of multiple seam paths having the same energy, we grab the first lowest energy path we see for removal when iterating through our distance array, which is why we trace back our seam path starting at column 0 in this example. We keep this in mind in our code. For example, when performing Dijkstra's on an image, we must account for passing in an origin pixel, a left border pixel, a right border pixel, and a middle pixel. Once we have a reference to the seam, removal is trivial. We simply create a new image by copying over every pixel except for the pixels found in the seam over to a new temporary image. Once we remove the seam, we simply recalculate the energies in the image. This is to ensure for future seam removals that we are always removing the seam with the least amount of energy in it. By doing all this, we can pass in various images of various sizes while maintaining content awareness while resizing said image.